Hey everyone, if you're new here, my name is Andrew Hess, and today we're going to create a collection based on a selection in Power Apps. And there's a lot of power behind creating a collection based on a selection. So we're going to use a gallery to collect what we select based on, normally on a checkbox. And then once we have that collection, we can do things with it. We can send that collection to JSON through Power Automate. We can create charts based on that selection. We can send that uh, selection to another data source. So let's get into it and let's create a collection selection. All right, so we're here in Power Apps. Now the goal is, is we have a gallery and this gallery is set up to some data source. This can be whatever data source that you have. This could be, you know, Dataverse, SQL, Excel, whatever your data source is, that's fine. We are connected to SharePoint and we can do edit data and we can take a look at this data source. So we can see I have some rows in here and the goal would be to be able to select some of the items and collect our selection. What we wanna do is we want to first have a way to select everything. So in my gallery here, just a very simple gallery. It's just a gallery with some rows in here. Each one of these are my different fields. Inside this gallery, I wanna insert a checkbox. Now you can do whatever you want. If you wanna do a toggle, whatever, but we're gonna use a checkbox. And I'm gonna move the checkbox all the way to the left side, to the start. And I'm gonna remove that label. I really don't want that label there, so. The label will make blank and the width will make a little smaller to about 50. Okay, so we now have a gallery and it has a checkbox. Now this checkbox doesn't do anything. You have to think about this. Instead of, instead of writing to your data source every time you click check, we should create a collection for the data of this checkbox, right? The selection does not matter unless we're in our app. A collection stores the data in the memory of the app, right? So it's not permanent data, it's just in the memory of the app. So I have two buttons down here, and this is collect with a variable checkbox. So I wanna create a new variable. And when I click this button, I want to collect with a new variable and that's going to be our checkbox. So I'm going to say clear collect, clear collect. And what do we want to collect? We want to do our collection details. So this is the name of your collection. You can name it whatever you'd like. And I'm just calling it details because the name of our SharePoint list was details. So we're going to clear collect collection details. And what do we want to collect? Now you could just collect everything in SharePoint. So here we are, we now collect, we click the button, it creates a collection, and it's four rows with everything in SharePoint. So it collects all the data from our SharePoint list. But I wanna add a column to our data, into the collection. So I'm just gonna say add columns to our SharePoint list, and what do we wanna add? I'm going to call it var, V-A-R, checkbox, and I'm going to set it as false. And we need another parentheses. So now when we look at that, and you look at that clear collect, our collection of our SharePoint list, and we're adding a column. We're going to add a var checkbox column and set it to false on every row. So when I click play, and I click on our button, we have then collected four rows again, but now we have a new row called var checkbox. And this is in the memory of our app. So it's really not gonna mess out the functionality. It's not gonna make our app slower. It's gonna run faster instead of trying to write this to a data source every time. All right, so now let's re-update our items property of our gallery. So we have gallery here, gal details. The items property is now the col let's try this again col details 
So now we're using SharePoint, but we have a new column called var checkbox. And so we're gonna set our checkbox here, the checked property equal to this item dot var checkbox. All right, so now we've set this up as var checkbox. It's false everywhere. But if we just click on it, it's not gonna update yet. Right? It's not gonna update our collection. So how do we update our collection? So we'll go to our checkbox and we're gonna say on check, we're gonna do an update, but we can't just update because it's not gonna update the right row. So we have to say update if, and what are we gonna update? Our collection details, but how does it know what row we're on? So with SharePoint, we have an internal field called ID. So luckily we have this ID field with SharePoint. And when ID is equal to this item dot ID, so when the row we're on is equal to the SharePoint ID, then we are going to update var checkbox to the opposite. So opposite is an exclamation mark or not var checkbox. So we're gonna update our collection on the row that we want and then we're gonna update the checkbox to the opposite of whatever the checkbox is. And we're gonna do the same thing on uncheck. So on uncheck, we're also going to update the checkbox. So now check this out. We have nothing selected. We, we saw before that everything was false. If we check everything off and we look at the, the collection, so here on the variables and we go to the collection, we can then see that var checkbox is set to true on every row. Let's say we just um, do, you know, we uncheck the top two. Take a look at the collection again. Uh, var checkbox, actually right here, false, false, true, true. So it's only updating now based on that checkbox. And that's awesome. There's so many functionalities that you can do now that we can uncheck and select data. So we're now selecting based on our collection. Uh, it's hard to say. A selection based on your collection. A collection selection, there we go. So it's a collection selection. So now let's create a collection based on the selection. So on our collection selection button, on the on select property, now we're going to clear collect and we're going to call this um, call selection. I like that collection selection. All right. So we're going to create a new selection and it's going to be based on, there's a few ways you can do this, but I'm going to base it on the gallery here. So based on my gallery called gal details, I'm going to say, gal details so we could collect everything once again we could collect everything all items we could collect everything in our gallery but what we really want to do is we want to filter it our gallery based on what based on if var var checkbox is equal to true now you can write equal to true but there's a, a some more shortcuts Maybe you want to keep equal to true, but you could also just say when var checkbox. And we're missing a parentheses here. So both options are available. So you can say var checkbox or you can say var checkbox is equal to true, whatever you want. But because it's a Boolean value, the FX formula understands that. So now when we click on, let me rename this. I want to rename this to collection selection. I like that collection selection all right so now when we click on collection selection it then collects from the gallery the two rows that are selected and var var checkbox is equal to true so if we look at the title field new form and 545 project new form 545 project if we select rebuild and 545 project and we recollect so i click this button again there's then two rows again but now in the title field 
you'll see that we have rebuild and 545 project. Let's just check one more time. We'll select everything, collect, four rows. One more time, let's unselect everything. And that's zero rows. So now that we have this collection based on our selection, there's so many paths that we can take. We can create JSONs. We can you know, send this data to Power Automate. We can send this data to other places. We can manipulate this data. We can create charts out of this. We can populate our charts based on this data. So I'm gonna save that for the next few weeks. But for this week, I just wanted to go over creating a collection selection. Love that name. Thank you all for watching. Next week, there's a few ways we're gonna go. And that is we're going to create a brand new Excel file based on our selection. So it's kind of like exporting just our, our selected data. And then I think maybe we'll go into, you know, populating some charts or, or something. We'll do more options with this collection selection. So thank you all for watching. Like and subscribe. Let's get into it in the next weeks. Thank you all.